Now to the angel of the Lord in, in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since so you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come in on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they live it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down of heaven from my God, and I will write on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now get ready as we will uh, appreciate this message of God to join the beloved in the uh, islands of Patmos. And this message is very applicable to the conditions and to the situations of the world where you and I are living. So the message I would like to expound to you is door of opportunity. The door of opportunity. But before I go further, I just want to give you just a brief information and the background of the Church of Philadelphia so you can figure out where they came from, their characteristics, their strength, their passions, and their visions in life. Now Philadelphia, by the way, is one of the churches in the book of Revelation. John the Apostle mentioned together with other six churches in Asia Minor. Now Philadelphia is a city that is called a city of praise. That's the meaning of the city, a city of praise. Now the primary role of the praise city in the ancient time is to be twofold. Number one, the leading vehicle that will hasten a message and then a carrier of the Greek culture and language. That's the two reasons for the particular city. Now the city and the characteristic uh, is mentioned also in the history. Now she was on the edge of a great plain on the top, shall we say, in, in the northern part of Darwin. And there's a plain land, well, of course that's an ocean. Uh, so she was on the edge of the great plain. <coughs> now used to be it was, a, it was a volcanic center of lava and ashes. Now the makeup of the land, just like Mount Mayon Volcano, is so fertile and become famous for the grape growing area in the, in the producers of wine. Now in our country, in the land of Australia, we're also producing good wines, like the Philadelphia. We have quality grapes in Australia, we have one in Wagga Wagga, and we have also uh, a grape in Persa grape, wine of South Australia and close by in the northern part of New South Wales or here in Sydney we have in the Hunter Valley. Now the same land that is so blessed of the great harvest is also had experienced an ongoing peril or exposure to harm, exposure to danger because of earthquakes. Fertile land but there was an ongoing harm or danger because of earthquakes. Now today, in our present dilemma or condition of the world, earthquakes and tornadoes and tsunamis that claim millions of lives become just common disasters and more intense is coming as the Lord's return is right at the corner. Now, in AD 17, 
There came a great earthquake. This is the story of this uh, city, so you can have the overview of the city. A great earthquake that even the other city were destroyed. Now Sardis, one of the churches in, in the book of Revelation, it was destroyed. And ten other big cities were destroyed. Now Philadelphia, a center of earthquake like in the Philippines, we have Catanduanes and Batanes Island or province. They have calamities of another kind. We know that Catanduanes is known as the door pack of the typhoon. Why Philadelphia is called the city of earthquakes. You can see that. Now they learn to face all this kind of disaster with courage. That's their personality. They face it with courage and self-possession. When the city of the north was hit with an earthquake, they moved to the south. When the south was hurt with an earthquake and the building, there were big cracks in their big buildings and youth building during the time, they moved to the open field. And build their, their huts, small houses in that area where they came from, their characteristic, their strength, their passions, and their visions in life. Now, Philadelphia, by the way, is one of the churches in the book of Revelation. John the Apostle mentioned together with other six churches in Asia Minor. Now, Philadelphia is a city that is called a city of praise. That's the meaning of the city, a city of praise. Now, the primary role of the praise city in the ancient time is to be twofold. Number one, the leading vehicle that will hasten a message and then a carrier of the Greek culture and language. That's the two reasons for the particular city. Now, the city in the characteristic uh, is mentioned also in the history. Now she was on the edge of a great plain on the top, shall we say, in, in the northern part of Darwin. And there's a plain land, well, of course, that's an, that's an ocean. Uh, so she was on the edge of the great plain. <coughs> now, used to be, it was, a, it was a volcanic center of lava and ashes. Now, the makeup of the land, just like Mount Mayon volcano, is so fertile and become famous for the great growing area in the, in the producers of wine. Now, in our country, in the land of Australia, we are also producing good wines, like the Philadelphia. We have quality grapes in Australia. We have one in Wagga Wagga, and we have also uh, a grape, and first a grape, wine of South Australia, and close by in the northern part of New South Wales, or here in Sydney, we have in the Hunter Valley. Now, the same land that is so blessed of the great harvest is also had experienced an ongoing peril or exposure to harm, exposure to danger because of earthquakes. Fertile land, but there was an ongoing harm or danger because of earthquakes. Now, today, in our present dilemma or condition of the world, earthquakes and tornadoes and tsunamis that claim millions of lives become just common disasters and more intense is coming as the Lord's return is right at the corner. Now, in AD 17, there came a great earthquake. This is the story of this uh, city, so you can have the overview of the city. A great earthquake that even the other city were destroyed. Now, Sardis, one of the churches in, in the book of Revelation, it was destroyed. And ten other big cities were destroyed. Now, Philadelphia, a center of earthquake like in the Philippines, we have Catanduanes and Batanes Island or province. They have calamities of another kind. We know that Catanduanes is known as the door pack of the typhoon. Why Philadelphia is called the city of earthquakes. You can see that. Now, they learn to face all this kind of disaster with courage. That's their personality. They face it with courage and self-possession. When the city of the north was hit with an earthquake, they moved to the south. 
when the south was hurt by an earthquakes and their building, there were big cracks in their big buildings and huge building during the time, they moved to the open field and built their, their huts, small houses in that area outside the city. And I want you to see, see how focused they were in their commitment even to their homeland. Of all the cities of Asia Minor, Philadelphia receives the greatest praise. When they were attacked by the Turks, they restored the place in all the cities. Look at that, they're being attacked by earthquakes and now by the Turks. They were able to, to restore the city once again. Long after the country round had passed finally under the Turkish power, Philadelphia, listen to this, Philadelphia Church of Philadelphia City held up above the ground the banner of Christian faith. I salute that kind of description. It was in the 14th century that it fell. But listen, up to this day, there is a, there is a Christian bishop and thousand Christian in that land today. Now it is displayed all the noble qualities of this church endurance, truth, and steadfastness, which are attributed to it in the letter of St. John amidst the ever-threatening danger of the Turkish attack. So our study this afternoon will dictate the kind of a church we would be in the future based in our, in your behavior, based in your, or our response to the good news and the modeling example of the lives of the Philadelphia church. It will just dictate what kind of church we are in the future. Now we will be happy to adopt the strength of this church as we unveil <clears throat> her characteristic. And you might live like many Christians today, comfortable, contented, and let the days and years pass by without a ray of accomplishment for the kingdom of God. Now you will make a decision to embrace the truth of our study or live it in a neutral life signifies not interested to the factual positive qualities of the missionary church, Philadelphia. Now this study will bring us to a desired wonderful destiny or destination in here or, or maybe just hear it without any action. Now you have the option to choose. Number one, you can accept the teaching today or you can just leave it or maybe take it and then pick it up later on. But for me, I cannot afford to leave an easygoing Christian and forget the wonderful opportunity <clears throat> that comes in my life to embrace it and put it into action. So it's an opportunity for us to understand this calling is given once in your life, whether you have to take it and then maybe take it later, or may just, just listen to it or embrace it. Now this study is about the seven churches of a book of Revelation. Five of them were extinct. They're out now and only two were praised by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now the question is, I want you to look further to the future. Just a thought in your mind. Where will you be in your faith 10 to 15 years from now when the majority of the leaders of the world or in the world and the world system is oppressing the expression of Christianity even in our land with all the leaders, some of the leaders in our land today or leaders of the government are indifferent and many become the enemies of the teaching of Christianity and of Jesus Christ today in many countries of the world. Now, which church or believers would you be? So let us get ready to see a powerful church and her characteristics and learn from them so you and I can stand the test of time while opportunity is widely open. So we'll be seeing again beginning from verse 7 all the way to verse 13. Let's go back again to...